Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Real Estate Shorts. I'm Alex Morkate, and today we're going to talk about what happens if you don't have FAR explicitly defined within your land development code. We'll explore how you can still calculate development potential, some of the pitfalls and considerations to keep in mind, and from there, really focus on how parking is going to be one of the primary limiting factors of how much you can build on a site. Let's get started. So first, what are the other limiting metrics or characteristics used by a municipality within the land development code to limit or encourage some form of development? So some of the more common ones would be lot coverage, off-street parking requirements, setbacks, building height, unit density, landscaping. There are a handful of others, but these tend to be the most prominent at the very least, because they impact the property's development potential the most. And so as we'll see in a handful of examples in a, in a few minutes, each one of these are going to have a different impact on how much you can build. I, at least in my opinion, I believe the greatest of which is going to be off-street parking or lot coverage. So we'll explore both in a moment. But I think as we go through it, from here on after, we'll illustrate some examples to show how we can perform these calculations to estimate as best as we can on a back of the envelope way, how much you can build on a property. So this first example is this combination of if we were to have lot coverage and building height, how would these be used together to help determine the most you can build on a property? So. Let's say we have an acre, 43,560 square feet worth of land. If we have an acre and lot coverage of 50% and a maximum building height of one, how much can we build? So I think we can begin to envision this pretty straightforward, right? It'll be relatively easy for us to figure out what this could look like. So if we have an acre of land and we're only allowed to build one story, then if we could build to the lot line across all the way, and then the most you could build is 43,560 square feet. However, lot coverage in this case is going to limit the building footprint on that parcel. So you can't have an impermeable building footprint greater than half of your lot area. So 50% of an acre is 21,700 square feet. That's gonna tell us that you can't build any more than that amount. So lot coverage in this case is gonna be that primary limiting factor. So as an example, what if you were to have a building height of four stories? If you still only have lot coverage of 50%, now you can build four stories on a 50% area. So you could build up four stories, but your building footprint is still only gonna be 21,780 square feet. So lot coverage is going to restrict how much of that land you can build on, and height is going to dictate obviously how high you can build on that footprint. So the next example is going to be this combination of height and setbacks. And so in this case, it gets a bit more complicated because setbacks can be interpreted and applied in a lot of different ways. So front, side, rear, and other side, whether it's called interior side or second street facing side, these four sides of a parcel are going to determine how much of a setback. So how far away from the lot line are you allowed to build? So for example, in most residential neighborhoods, you'll hear something like between zero and call it 10 feet from your neighbor is what you can build. So zero would be a townhome, for example, you can build right next to each other. And then in most single family residences of moderate density, you'll be call it five, seven and a half, ten 10 feet from your neighbor. And those feet will allow for uh, you to be able to have a side yard of some kind. So in this example, I chose 10 just for the easy math. If we have 43,560 square feet, our acre, you can build two stories, but you do have setbacks. I wanted to illustrate what this could look like. So if we assumed a perfect square, so you'll have about 209 square feet on all sides for this acre, but we have 10 foot setbacks all the way around. 
then we really need to find a way to deduct those 10 feet from each side and then recalculate what that footprint could be. And so in this case, what I ended up saying was, let me take about 209 square feet and subtract 10 from the two sides. So effectively subtracting 20 and then do the same from the other. So from the front and the rear, subtract another 10 from each. So in doing so, we are beginning to constrain how much of that total lot we can build on. We are reducing the total footprint we can build on. So we took our lot area that we could build on from an acre to about two thirds of an acre, almost three quarters of an acre. So with 35,600 square feet, now this is our footprint area and we can build vertically from here. So if we can build two stories, it'll be 35,600 times two or 71,000. The mechanism of setbacks really helps you define uh, proximity, density, intensity, view corridors, easements, streets, and so on. So if a municipality, for example, wants to encourage a 12 foot sidewalk, then they'll probably have a relatively heavy or large setback from the front to restrict the footprint to allow or accommodate for that sidewalk space. I think the final example is going to be unit density. So unit density is going to define how many residential units you can place on a given parcel. So in suburban areas, you'll see half a unit per acre, maybe one unit per acre. As you begin to roll up into townhomes, maybe you can find five or seven units an acre. As you graduate from there, you could find garden style, low mid-rise apartment buildings. So anything from 15 to 20 to 30 plus units per acre, all the way up into the urban core where you can find 7,500, 200, 400, 500 units per acre. Every municipality is different. Every city is different. And what they want that graduation of unit density to look like is gonna be based entirely on their comprehensive plan, their growth management plan. But as an example, I said, what if you can build 150 units on one acre? So in this case, you can build 150 times your acreage. Now, what if it was half an acre? So now you can build 150 units an acre, but you only have half an acre. So half an acre times 150 gives you 75 units. So you can use all these characteristics or factors to limit or encourage different kinds of development. So as you can imagine, if I wanted to encourage high density and intensity development in my neighborhood, then I would say no setbacks anywhere. A very high coverage to maximize the building footprint, an unlimited number of stories of height, and an unlimited unit density, so that that way I could have as much density and intensity as possible. The caveat to all of this is parking. So especially when we begin to consider urban development or urban redevelopment, parking tends to be constrained to on the parcel instead of parking offsite. And it tends to be limited to what you can fit within the, your building envelope because it's gonna be challenging for you to fit thousands of parking spaces on an acre for your 70 story tower on simply street parking or neighboring parking. So you have to find a way to fit it within your building volume or envelope. So if we have a maximum development of, call it 100,000 square feet worth of total volume, how much of that needs to be parking relative to rentable common area, back of house, mechanical, vertical circulation, and so on. So how do we reallocate or redistribute and then determine the relationship between rentable space and everything else. So to run through a quick example of, you know, at least in my opinion, how parking is the primary constraint around urban development, I wanted to walk you through this case. We have an acre. You can build on 80% of that acre. You can build no more than three stories and you must have a parking ratio of four per thousand square feet worth of rentable space. So in other words, if you have a thousand square feet worth of rentable space, you need to provide four parking spaces. Each parking space will amount to about 400 square feet. That's not just the stall itself, so where you put in your car, but also the 
way that you access it. So the drive lanes, the parking lanes that you use to get access to that parking stall. So to kind of recap what we've gone through so far, if you have 80% coverage and an acre, then the product of the two will give you our footprint. So about 35,000 square feet. So 80% times an acre. Now, if we can build up to three stories, then we'll say our footprint times three. So about 104, 105,000 square feet. Now, from here, unfortunately, we need to find a way to fit both rentable area, common area, back of house, and parking all within the 104,000 square feet. So you can do it manually. So you can say, give me 40,000 square feet. 40,000 square feet is going to require 160 parking spaces. 160 parking spaces is going to take up 64,000 square feet worth of total area. So 160 times 400. And so 64 plus 40,000 is going to get me close to my 104,544 square feet. So we can go through this iterative process where we test 35,000, no, 41,000, no. And we continue to go back and forth until we get there. Or you can do it algebraically, where you can solve for X, let's say, where X is the maximum rentable area based on the relationships and the ratios given above. You can go through it in either way. I'll go through the algebraic solution in another episode where we talk exclusively about parking. But for now, I simply wanted to illustrate how you had a total volume of 104,000 square feet but you could really only build about 40,000 square feet with a rentable space because everything else is encompassed between back of house, common area, lobby amenities, and parking. And so parking, again, in this case, is amounting to a significant, if not majority amount of the space. So just to illustrate the point, how parking could drive that primary constraint or concern. So just to recap, in the event that you don't have an FAR, don't worry, you could still figure out how much you can build. Other characteristics or metrics like height, coverage, and off-street parking can be used to begin to limit or constrain how much footprint you can build, how high you can build, and how much volume you can build within that, quote, envelope. Parking is likely going to be one of the biggest constraints, and we'll explore that one in a bit more detail. But as illustrated in the example, it amounted to half, if not more than half, of our total building volume. We'll explore how you can still calculate development potential, some of the pitfalls and considerations to keep in mind, and from thereafter. So if you found this video helpful, I'd encourage you to take a look at a handful of others. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again.